Zixi really comes into play when you have a uh, public internet connection or a connection that is a little bit more temperamental, like an internet connection, uh, maybe a wireless connection or a satellite connection that has uh, higher levels of dropouts. So, so why do we need Zixi? Why do we need uh, better transmission methods? Uh, Vitovation, we get asked every day. Uh, I need to push video from Asia to LA. Uh, I need to, to transport video uh, uh, over a less expensive pipe. I have an MPLS network, but I'd like to do a backup through the internet. Or I'm using satellite and fiber, and I want a very inexpensive backup. And what's driving all of this is the tremendous amount of uh, payload or, or um, network usage for IP video traffic. And uh, Cisco every year puts these statistics together. They, they update their reports on uh, uh, network usage, telecom usage, and in particular uh, video uh, transmission over, over, uh, over the public internet. So you can see here the, the, the growth here in, by 2017 to 62 exabytes. That's a lot of bytes. So let me see, my forward button keeps getting stuck. So let's see here. So again, this is just another look at it that, you know, as uh, uh, this is already a little dated. This is the statistics from, uh, from uh, uh, middle of uh, 2013. But you see here how many hours of online video uh, Americans or, or consumers in the world are watching online each day. Um, consuming up to uh, 44 hours of video. As a business, we see this too. We, we, we prefer our content delivered as educational videos. That's part of the reason why we're doing this webinar. Uh, people want to, uh, we're a little disconnected in our society. You know, we're all so busy with our day jobs that we want to interact through video, through conferencing. Uh, we want to uh, um, you know, it's the, it's the old adage of pictures worth a thousand words that, uh, yes, reading, white papers, uh, literature, books are important, and we, we don't want to lose that, but the, the trend is to watch more and more video and more and more of that live and, and video on demand is, is being done uh, um, through the Internet. So here's an interesting statistic. So when you're watching video online, uh, if if the if there is a if the video loads quickly and there's minimal buffering, uh, they're they're more likely to watch 250 percent more content. And uh, there's a statistic, you know, uh, one, two, three seconds, you're gone. If it takes more than three seconds to load, and that's not just videos. That, that's that's uh, as a company, we have a website, and if our pages load too slowly, people will move on to the next piece of content. If, if your content is not immediate and, and on demand and, and virtually instantly loads, people will move on and, and they'll, they'll miss the message. So what, what is Zixi? How does Zixi fit into all of this? So, so Zixi is basically three different pieces. And there's the feeder piece. That's usually where the encoding is done or the transmission is gone, done the broadcaster piece that kind of sits in the middle, and then there's the receiver piece or the decoder piece. And, and Zixi can be used with existing hardware. So if you have a, if you're a sports league and you have a bunch of encoders at all of your venues, you don't have to throw all your encoders out. If you don't have encoders or if it's a new build, we can provide encoders with the Zixi feeder capability built in but you don't have to buy new encoders. We can uh, integrate with uh, and, and interop with your existing encoders. Uh, the real special sauce happens in the broadcaster. Now that either, uh, it either sits at the customer premises or it sits in the cloud. Uh, uh, Vitovation and Zixi would provide that, that cloud capability or we would sell you the appliance to go into your premises. Uh, and it usually sits in the middle. And the same thing with the receiver. If, if you already have hundreds of receivers and you don't want to you know, 
uh, reorder them uh, if it's an existing install. If it's a new install, we would recommend decoders with Zixi capability built into them. Just just simplifies the workflow a little bit. Would save you some some costs. But that's basically the gist of it. And you know, it accelerates uh, live video as well as video on demand. So uh, you know, you're watching movies at home or it's IPTV. There's video on demand. Whether it's live or pre-recorded video on demand, you, you want those videos to load quickly and reliably. You don't want dropouts in the middle of the broadcast. And you can see here, we, we as I said, integrates with encoders, IRDs, cameras, switches, set-top boxes. JVC has integrated Zixi into some of their cameras, uh, computers, set-top boxes, you, you name it. So here's, here's a little slide of the, of the old way of of transmitting a, a, a live event or a news event. You'd send out a, a, a satellite truck or a microwave truck. You got a camera operator. You shoot your five alarm fire. You beam up to the satellite, and then you, you beam back to uh, master control via satellite. Everyone does it this way. Uh, this is, this is the, the de facto industry standard. But all of this is expensive. The SAT truck costs millions of dollars. The, the uh, uh, satellite circuitry, the satellite bandwidth is extremely expensive. So Zixi is an alternative to satellite or fiber. And it's done through unmanaged internet. So you can see here, you know, the Zixi way of doing things is you'd have a Zixi feeder out in the field. And you'd go through we're working with clients to push Zixi through cellular. Uh, if there's an internet connection here, you can, can push through, through uh, the internet. Um, it could even be a lesser, uh, a lower cost internet satellite connection, like, like um, uh, 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 an internet uh, connection through the, through the satellite. So there's, there's a myriad of different, different applications. A uh, client may already have an MPLS network or uh, a level three or a, a circuit from the switch, uh, but they're just looking for a backup in case there's some, some disaster or some problem. So these are all the different types of applications. Then once this, the video gets into the Zixi ecosphere, we can push out to CDNs. We can push out to mobile devices. We can bring it back to the studio. Uh, so we can we can share and collaborate. So it's not only a transport uh, mechanism, you know, making uh, lower cost internet connections more robust. It can be a distribution system to manage, to transcode and distribute your your content as well. So what what is the value here? So we we can give you uh, uh, virtually flawless connections, broadcast quality, that's what the industry is looking for. It's very quick to set up, uh, significantly reduces costs when compared to satellite or fiber, and it can increase your revenue. We give you hooks that you can push to CDNs and you can add, uh, push your content to second screens. So this can give you additional capability, save you costs in, in transmitting back to the studio, but also give you capability to push to over the top to second screens and different things like that and to the web. So under the hood, I'm not going to read this whole slide to you guys. There's a lot of information here. But, but basically what, what Zixi is doing here, it's a, it's a patented and proprietary method of forward error correction and uh, automatic uh, repeat requests. And it does it with uh, content awareness. So that's what this CAFEC, this CAARQ. So what it's doing is it's looking at the actual content. You know, you can do an elaborate FEC uh, checksum calculations, but if it's not in a busy part of the picture uh, or a critical part of the picture, you know, why do you need extra redundancy? So it, it's prioritizing the most critical aspects of the transmission stream to give you a reliable transmission. Uh, Typically, what Zixi uh, recommends is uh, whatever the circuit latency is to, to, to set the, the, the system for two or three times that latency. So it does add a little bit of latency to the system, but you know, if you have a, a 100 millisecond round trip connection between LA and New York, which is 
which is conceivable. Uh, Zixi says, you know, we'll do about 200 to 300 milliseconds of buffering. And uh, that's still very quick. Um, um, and to be able to get that low of a latency over a public internet connection is, is really amazing. So, you know, it, it, it manages the circuit. It's dynamic. It's uh, uh, managing the jitter, the packet loss. Uh, it's dynamically, uh, uh, if, you're, if you were using a Zixi in, uh, enabled encoder, if there is, uh, as we call it, back pressure or there's a, a, a severe hit in bandwidth, uh, Zixi will tell, the Zixi broadcaster will tell the encoder to lower its bit rate in, or, uh, on, in order for the uh, video not to drop out until the bandwidth restores itself or the uh, packet loss interruptions uh, normalize themselves. And it works with all the industry standard codecs and formats. It has AES encryption. It has broadcast standard uh, monitoring, uh, detailed QoS statistics. So you, you really see what's going on with your transmission stream while you're using Zixi. And uh, you know, unlike uh, RTMP, uh, you know, real-time messaging protocol, uh, Zixi provides error-free delivery, but at a more predictable latency. You know, as I stated earlier, you know, you would at the beginning of the shoot or the beginning of the event set the latency uh, or the buffering to a couple hundred milliseconds, and it would remain constant. And Zixi behind the scenes would manage things, and and so we can do this sub-second uh, distribution uh, globally over the public and unmanaged uh, internet. So here's a here's a, a very uh, telling slide. So so here we have a, a hundred meg. Uh, stream uh, wrapped in a in a Zixi transport stream uh, going along nicely, and you can see here if there's latency issues out to uh, 400 milliseconds with 20% packet loss, the Zixi tolerates that. All these other formats, HLS, RTMP, the Microsoft, and the RTSP, you see they they quickly start falling off with with 0.1% uh, packet loss and 100 to 150 milliseconds of, of, uh, uh, of latency. So they fall apart really, really quick. And, and you see how uh, uh, the Zixi protocol is rock solid. So here's another slide. So we see here that, uh, uh, you know, so primarily we're talking about live, the previous slide we're talking about live video. Here's even for, for video on demand. You know, the network can't tell the difference between a live stream and a, and a, and a video on demand stream, the user still wants uh, the, the live and the video on demand to be uninterrupted, you know, minimal buffering at startup, and then just continuous play out. So you can see here the Zixi ramps up real quick uh, in this example to, uh, to about 8 megs. And this was done over like a, a residential grade ADLS circuit, a 10 meg circuit, uh, which was having a consistent packet loss of about 2%. So you can see here we've got some serious bumps in the road here, you know. Uh, there's a lot of zero throughput here on this uh, uh, HTTP, HTTP circuit here. You can see here you started out real good and then boom, it just got hammered. So, so the average throughput down here is pretty poor. And again, the Zixi is just rock solid. Uh, here's another example. Uh, uh, Zixi, uh, two identical feeds were, were, were passed through the the internet, one with Zixi, one without, uh, is about a five uh, a millisecond, uh, a five megabit per second uh, feed, and you can see blocking, artifacts, buffering, uh, uh, the the generic uh, uh, transport stream cannot handle the the poor internet connection. Another example too, this is typical, uh, without Zixi, after after over a minute, uh, the system was still trying to load the video with Zixi, it loaded in, you know. 400 milliseconds or less than half a second. And uh, this was a stream that was bounced around the globe. So uh, this is just not, uh, you know, some theoretical uh, uh, concept. The, uh, uh, there's a, a press release on the Sports Video Group uh, website uh, where uh, Turner Sports pushed the Riders' Cup from Scotland uh, back to Atlanta. Uh, using an internet connection. Now, the internet connection they used in that application wasn't uh, uh, a completely unmanaged connection. It was a, a more of an enterprise-grade internet connection. But, uh, 
you know, if if a, if a connection is going to be your primary feed, it's always a good idea to have connections from multiple carriers. Uh, uh, if you're going to push to the internet only to have two ISPs, two connections going through two different routes, is always a good idea for redundancy. And Zixi has bonding and redundancy capability built into its fabric, so uh, all that's very easy to do. You can see here a quote from Sky News that uh, they're pushing uh, uh, this, this, uh, this application or this project won an award at IBC. And uh, uh, this was for uh, disaster backup recovery. And over a multi-day shoot, you can see here there were absolutely no packet losses. Uh, they were pushing um, uh, quite a bit of bandwidth 24-7. So uh, uh, if you're a 24-7 operator, Zixi is reliable. Uh, for uh, temporary shoots or for 24-7 uh, operability. You can see here, you know, we can go around the globe, you know, content capture, acquisition, uh, distribution or transmission uh, through the broadcaster. You start with the feeder, go to the broadcaster, and then the delivery for the encoders. Uh, we, we can, uh, uh, we have done applications numerous times pushing video around the globe. So here's a, a little further breakdown. So, so we can have a source and we can do a bonded feeder where we might have multiple internet connections or maybe internet and some cellular or internet and satellite combined, uh, just multiple paths. Uh, bonded together, and then the Zixi broadcaster debonds those those signals. So through one transmission management system, we can build in redundancy that way, just to kind of simplify the hardware you need when you're when you're broadcasting from the field. Uh, so there's a myriad of different ways we can set up the topology of 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 Zixi to work with your workflow. If you want redundant hardware. I'll show you slides that are coming up that show you clustered and redundant uh, uh, Zixi uh, broadcasters. But you know, this just shows that uh, how we can bond uh, uh, solutions together. And there's a uh, SDK or, or uh, application software that can sit on an encoder or an encoding appliance that gives this, this feeder and bonding capability. So we can integrate it with uh, some manufacturer's hardware or work with your existing hardware to add Zixi capability to your existing uh, hardware and infrastructure. Uh, you know, the feeder will accept, this is the feeder if it's, it's outside the encoder. The feeder can be inside the encoder or the, if it's a separate appliance, it can accept uh, an MPEG transport stream, UDP, RTP, RTMP, et cetera, just about any, any format, any protocol. Uh, uh, we have multi-level QoS protection and encryption. So it creates a protective stream that goes over the internet and uh, it's easily connected and integrated uh, to your devices. Integrated with many popular encoders or we, like I said, we can, we can uh, uh, with a box or a feeder appliance outside of your encoders, use your existing encoders. Uh, then the, the broadcaster, you know, the, the device that sits in the middle, uh, can either be in the cloud or on your premises. Uh, this is where the streams terminate. This is if we're bonding streams, this is where they terminate. We will replicate the streams. We will convert and transcode streams. Uh, we can do live and video on demand play out and the broadcaster can help you manage all that. Uh, uh, multiple broadcasters can be clustered or have automatic failover for backup and failover capabilities. Having multiple pieces of broadcaster hardware on your prem or in the cloud. Uh, this gives managers the ability to, to manage and protect all their critical live streams uh, in the cloud or on the prem using the Zixi cloud services. So the, the, uh, the Zixi receiver, so uh, it, it uh, uh, delivers the protected streams to the master control to the head end to the teleport to multi, uh, mobile devices. Uh, it has a, it can have redundant uh, input. So in other words, a Zixi receiver appliance can have uh, multiple streams coming to it and fail over. If stream A fails, it'll switch to stream B. That kind of thing. 
uh, or it could look at the quality of service if uh, one stream is having uh, more packet loss than another or packet loss beyond Zixi's capability to recover, it'll switch to a secondary stream. So all this is built into the, the Zixi fabric and the Zixi management. Uh, this is another way of looking at it. So uh, uh, we have the Zixi feeder. Uh, in this case, uh, this is not the encoder. The encoder would be feeding MPEG TS streams to it, or we do an RTMP push to the Zixi uh, feeder appliance. This could be, this capability uh, can and is integrated in certain vendors and coders. So, so this, is, this, this capability you see right here can be combined into the encoder appliance, but what we're showing here is you would feed your encoder streams into this appliance. Then what comes out is what we call the Zixi transport stream. And then that goes to the public internet, so it's got all that Zixi uh, content aware FEC, content aware ARQ built into this stream so we got a nice robust transmission stream uh, to our broadcaster which could be in the cloud or it could be uh, uh, at the receiver location so you know this could all be com combined at the receive location or this could be in the cloud or if we're doing a hop from LA to New York to London the Zixi broadcaster could be in your operations center in New York. So, again, if we're deploying Zixi for a client, you know, we would sit down with you and discuss your network needs, the different uh, connections you need globally, the level of redundancy you require for your operations, and we would design a Zixi system that would fit within your budget and give you the, the uh, uh, redundancy and reliability that you needed for your application. So like I said, every application is different. I, I have about 40 slides at the end of this presentation showing a myriad of different ways of connecting and using Zixi. Uh, there's some really cool stuff that's being done out there. So uh, here's another slide. So you know, Zixi, as I mentioned, is integrated into some of the JVC cameras or, it could, or uh, uh, encoders. Uh, it can be streams that are coming from other encoders. It could be a media server serving out video on demand files. And uh, we push that all into the broadcaster. This is what comes into the broadcaster. So the camera, the encoder, these other streams would be wrapped most likely into in a Zixi transport stream. The broadcaster would receive that. It would manage the play out from here, where we're going to push it to, how we're going to play it out, any uh, transmuxing or transcoding that might be necessary. So we need to push to an Apple device, we need to do HLS, and then push it out through a uh, CDN, through a content distribution network. We can manage that. Uh, CDNs might want a particular format of video, uh, a particular transport stream or protocol for Flash, Apple, or Android. We can manage that. Or if they just want an H.264 stream, and then they handle the transcoding to all the different uh, devices out there, we can, make, we can mix and match and do whatever is needed. So uh, the contribution comes in one side and the distribution of the video comes out the other side. And uh, this is all managed in the Zixi uh, uh, monitoring system. So here was a slide I was alluding to before for scalability and redundancy. So you could have a, an encoder source sitting out, out here, then a couple of uh, uh, redundant Zixi feeders, and uh, you can have dual redundancy. So you could have, you know, redundant encoders. You know, maybe one's going over satellite, one's going through Zixi. The Zixi circuit is very critical, so we have two of everything or multiples. So we can have uh, two active streams coming out simultaneously. So we have redundant paths going through all the time. The target decoder would see those paths continuing, and whichever one had the better quality of service, it would pick A or B. Uh, or we can have a passive standby so we don't use up bandwidth, you know. Uh, bandwidth would be running over here as a backup. That this, this second leg would only fire up if the first, the primary leg was having a problem. Then the, the Zixi uh, broadcasters in the cloud uh, or on your prem, we can cluster them, redundancy, have different paths, have them in different locations, uh, and then deliver uh, the Zixi uh, with the feeder to your decoder. So, so this is the Zixi ecosphere here in the middle. 
here's your generic encoder and decode. Uh, this middle section could be in the cloud, or this, this section right here could be on your prem, or a mixture of both. You know, you could have a, a, a rural connection coming in from another continent, and uh, you want it to hit a, a Zixi broadcaster in the cloud to, to make that hop, transatlantic hop. We, we can work with you and, and uh, design the system according to your needs. Yeah, you guys can come back and, and, and look at all these. Uh, you know, I kind of covered this load balancing, automatic switching, clustering. Uh, you can come back and, and read some of these details uh, about the, uh, uh, the Zixi feeder broadcaster and uh, decoder capabilities. So, you know, video transport applications, as I mentioned, you know, contribution, distribution, and monitoring are, are the big three uh, items when we're talking about moving or transporting video. Uh, you know, contribution, you know, you're on the front lines, you need to get the video reliably back to master control, reliably back to the studio. Uh, distribution, you might be a 24-7 uh, channel and you needed to get it out to cable TV head ends, you need to get a feed out to direct TV, to dish network, uh, you need to get it out to, to, to foreign broadcasters for rebroadcast, re that sort of thing, or simply just for monitoring. Uh, some clients, you know, they, they have a fiber optic network, they have satellite network, uh, they just want to peek in on different feeds around the world uh, using Zixi for monitoring. So Zixi is great for the, you can use it for the whole connection, but a lot of times, uh, the most expensive part of any connection is the first mile and the last mile. So we can provide you a, a protected first mile for ingest to your master control, or we can do first mile and last mile distribution on and off of your backbone. So let's just say you're in a venue and there's no telecom connection, but there is one a couple of blocks away at another venue. You could use a Zixi connection to get to that telco pop, and then bring your, your, your video back to New York or back to master control. Then at the receive side, say you need to receive, it's a temporary setup. You need, you need to receive in a temporary location that doesn't have its own uh, high quality telecom backbone, then the last mile could ride on Zixi. So it's, that, it's the, 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 the first and the last mile always of any network that, that's uh, um, the most expensive. In, in prior presentations, we talked about using some of our 60 gigahertz wireless technology for uh, getting signals to the first mile or the last mile to and from networks. It's the same type of idea except through the Internet. Uh, uh, news gathering, electronic news gathering or ENG is, is, uh, is an ideal application. Um, uh, primary distribution to remote uh, studios, backup as I mentioned, or redundancy for satellite and fiber, uh, you know, over-the-top distribution of video uh, with or without a CDN. We might be able to save a client money who's using a CDN like an Akamai or whatnot uh, to distribute video to smooth out some of those bumps. And, you know, CDNs are very good at doing that, uh, but that costs money. And we might be able to provide a more economical way of distributing video without needing a CDN. Uh, uh, or we would integrate with your CDN to cut down on some of the cost. Um, and then again, a lot of our clients, you know, uh, you know, most of our clients are broadcasters, sports leagues, TV stations, that sort of thing. But uh, this is a, a, a can be a very critical uh, tool for corporate, uh, you know, video on demand. Uh, more and more corporations we're working with, we're installing IPTV systems and. They want to collaborate videos, and they, you know they want to master head in at one lo centralized location globally. But then they want to move IPTV video to other continents, other cities, and Zixi's ideal for that. Uh, instead of having an MPLS network or an expensive telecom network, uh, we can set up a system that just uses the the unmanaged internet to to uh, to move that video. Uh, here's a, a case study. Uh, Turner Broadcast uh, 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 pushing different operators pushing video to a centralized location or v video being distributed from one central location to multiple destinations. So we can work in either way. Uh, uh, multiple videos coming into a central location or into a master control 
or pushing videos out, you know. So this would be, you know, moving videos back to master control, different feeds, live sporting events, news events, that sort of thing. And then this is distribution to uh, your different cable operators, your different satellite operators to distribute to the home for the uh, distribution to the consumer. So we can help in both contribution and distribution. Uh, this is just a little press release or an article about that uh, uh, opportunity uh, where we uh, helped uh, Sky News Arabia uh, uh, keep a 24-7 uh, circuit up and running without any packet loss for weeks. Uh, it really proves the, uh, the validity. Uh, like I said, this is not just some laboratory conceptual theoretical idea. There's, there's many broadcasters using it. JVC has uh, adopted the Zixi technology into some of their cameras. So, so JVC has stepped up and on some of their Pro HD broadcast cameras, uh, they have integrated Zixi. Uh, um, I have seen it in operation. They will even push the Zixi over a cellular modem that plugs into the camera. So what uh, JVC has done here is, is, is quite amazing, uh, integrating the, the Zixi technology into the JVC cameras. You can see down here, you know, there, I've seen demos where they pushed uh, live HD video over uh, cellular modems and Wi-Fi, and, and it, it's amazing. It works great. So it really just cuts out the need for the encoder, the Zixi feeder. The, the JVC camera will hook right into the, the Zixi cloud, and uh, you, can, you can manage your whole shoot and manage your content right, right through the Zixi cloud. Um, so here's some more use cases. You know, NASDAQ, Mundo Fox have used the News Corp, Wall Street Journal. Uh, you see here there's a little, little graphic here. Uh, Mundo Fox pushed a video from LA uh, down to Bogota. And that's a 24-7 channel. It works reliably. So uh, clients are, are, are using this technology already. Uh, the UFC here, you can see here from, from some of their events, they're pushing video. Uh, using a Zixi feeder, then they got redundancy in the cloud. They're doing some transcoding, and you can see here they push, uh, you know, their primary programming. They're pushing to New Lion. New Lion is probably pushing to the web. Uh, uh, we've worked with New Lion in the NHL on some projects. So, so you can see some major players here are are are, are working and operating with Zixi. Uh, I don't believe YouTube has has come on, on board with, with using Zixi, but you know, we, we, can, we can help you get the video uh, 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 closer to YouTube, let's put it that way, or get you a reliable question, uh, um, link as close to YouTube as we can. So, so you can see here, that's just an, uh, an example there. Um, you know, some over-the-top uh, integrations, uh, some, some set-top manufacturers have integrated Zixi into their set-top boxes, their PC players and their mobile devices. Uh, this particular provider is, is pushing about 800 channels uh, through the public internet. That, that's really amazing. That, that's, that's exciting stuff. Uh, here is uh, Stryker, the, the medical company. They, they have an appliance that's uh, managing and distributing video for, for medical type applications. This is just a little workflow of how uh, uh, the device the Zixi integrates with Active Directory. Uh, controls the uh, the content management system controls what clients or what users what PCs can see and have access to different content so uh, we're working with Zixi on integrating the Zixi technology into IPTV type systems and video type systems so uh, we're really excited at our uh, partnership with Zixi uh, we, we, we feel there's some some amazing things are going to be done in the, in the coming months uh, we expect to have some announcements about Zixi and Vidovation and some of the projects we're working on currently at NAB in a few months. But you can see here, I'm not going to read these all to you, there, there's, there's quite a number of big name uh, providers, telecom uh, companies, you know, Verizon is adopting this technology. Uh, you can see here there's some pretty big names here already using the technology. Uh, this is an interesting slide. Uh, when we're done with the uh, with the presentation, uh, Troy will will post uh, this video with my voice 
on the web, but you know, so you guys can study slides like this. Uh, we'll post the, the PowerPoint up there as well, but you can see here kind of the ecosphere here. So here are content creation. So here's a, here's a JVC camera. See, on this leg, the camera is talking directly to the Internet or the cloud using uh, probably like a cellular modem or Wi-Fi with Zixi pushing directly to the Internet. Then the camera could be talking to one of our encoders with Zixi and pushing to the Internet that way. Uh, there could be uh, some content capture from a mobile device that could be pushed. Then the traditional method of pushing it to satellite, we can add Zixi robustness to the satellite link. So you can see here uh, uh, we have a traditional path combined with the uh, unmanaged Internet path. Then in, in the middle here, we can, we can uh, uh, here in the cloud is the, is the Zixi broadcaster. This is the bridge. This could actually be sitting over here with this uh, uh, island of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, solutions. But, you know, this is the, the, the broadcaster is the bridge between the content uh, creation and the uh, cloud in the middle. But you can do live studio stuff, editorial, closed captioning post-production, you can send this a stream to, you know, in sports, metadata, uh, the statistics for the game, the number of shots on goal, that kind of thing. Uh, we can push video to, to a logger back at the sports headquarters uh, uh, to, to do some metadata and logging of the game. Uh, we can push the video on demand servers. We can do some transcoding, transmuxing, or we can just push to archive. Then we can push the video back out again now for distribution. So you see contribution, production, post-production done in here, then distribution. We can push Zixi out over satellite, go to uh, other locations, other media centers. We can push out and go to mobile apps, push to the web, push to mobile devices, push to a CDN. Uh, we can push to, to over-the-top type devices the web, smart TV, set-top boxes, consoles. So you pretty much get the idea here that the sky is the limit. You know, your workflow for your network from contribution, production, post-production, distribution, and then consumption could be quite different. And the flexibility of, of Zixi is, is ideal, uh, allowing us to customize all this for your specific application. You can see here News Corp collaborating between the Wall Street Journal, Fox News Channel. We, we gave them the ability, or Zixi gave them the ability to, to aggregate, do um, uh, logo overlays to rebrand the different videos uh, or rebrand the content depending upon where it was being delivered. Uh, so, so you can see here, you know, coming from New York, we can reach DC, UK, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Switzerland reliably through Zixi. Uh, here's another uh, cloud transmission platform. So, uh, you know, live acquisition gets pushed to, to the cloud. Amazon, uh, Azure, and other providers gets pushed back out for monitoring. We can take a path through satellite and private networks to get to the end user and get work to the network operations center or we can push through CDNs and Akamai uh, uh, to get to the end users as well. So you see again here the example of you know, the Zixi ecosphere uh, managing uh, all the distribution, all the different uh, paths for distribution of your content. Again, you know, this is getting a little redundant, but it's just a different way of, of showing the same thing. You know, this is a little bit of a cleaner slide. You got your camera. If it was a JVC camera, we could broadcast directly, but if it's a more traditional camera, we hit, hit satellite or the encoder. The Zixi feeder can uh, go over the bird, over the satellite, or through the Internet, or a combination of both. And then the, the, the uh, uh, receiver uh, can switch or seamlessly switch between the two feeds and do some protection switching. Uh, you know, news contribution. So, you know, someone in the field, someone in the studio, somebody out in some uh, remote area covering the weather or a live event, uh, all these can hit a Zixi encoder, uh, hit a feeder. The feeder can 
dump it into the Zixi cloud or push it directly to our ar archive or uh, push it to your master uh, master control room uh, and then from there get pushed back out using Zixi to Akamai for delivery to the home or delivery to the uh, uh, web or mobile devices etc so again you know, I'm, I'm not going to read all these slides to you but I think you guys get the idea you know we we can pull or push we can come multiple uh, sources to one control room, one control room push out to multiple destinations, or this shot, slide kind of shows a combination of both, you know, all these different bureaus sending video into uh, the Central Operations Center, uh, the Zixi Broadcaster is managing all that, adding the Zixi robustness, transcoding, you know, stream for storage, uh, dump it into uh, 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 dump it into storage for uh, video on demand, push for Akamai, for live streaming, as well as push to other remote offices that are other remote bureaus or studios that need that feed. So you, you guys get the idea. Um, here's another slide of uh, the UFC. Uh, um, actually, I think this is, a, this is a little redundant. I think we already saw this slide. I'll keep going. Um, here's another one, you know, so you could have some archive. Uh, Zixi's pushing the archive, you can monitor that. Um, your source could be archived and you can push for, I think of this, this is more of a maybe a film uh, workflow or a TV, TV or film that requires post-production, that sort of thing. So you could grab your content out in the field and then push to uh, different post-production studios to, to um, uh, uh, produce the video for uh, retransmission. Um, whether you're distributing it internationally, live, time shifted. Here, the, the next slide shows an interesting time shift. So, video here can can uh, source here in uh, looks like Greenland. I don't I don't know if this is a real application or a fictitious one, but we we have some live event happening up here in Greenland, and we're pushing it to London. And Zixi can help you manage it, the time shifting of that content. You know, maybe you want it to air 8 o'clock prime time at all your different destinations so you can manage when that channel will play, when the destinations will have access to that channel. So you can see here, push it, once it enters the Zixi ecosphere, we can push it around the world, uh, um, getting your content anywhere you need it. And then again, you know, as a backup to satellite, you know, so here's your traditional satellite link in the solid lines, and then Zixi's used uh, behind the scenes as a as an internet backup. Uh, the same thing too, you know, mo for monitoring, you know, uh, videos going up on the bird comes down. Uh, different video feeds can be pushed to Zixi, so a chief engineer can monitor his feeds through a Zixi connection on his mobile device his uh, uh, smart tablet or his uh, uh, home display or his desktop. And that can be very powerful for chief engineers. You know, a lot of chief engineers have to mo manage multiple uh, regional TV stations. They, they, they can't be in three places at once. They might have three, four, or half a dozen stations uh, or retransmission stations that they have to, to, to monitor. And uh, this gives them that ability. They can see if one of their stations has gone off the air. Uh, they can log in and, and watch uh, video for monitoring purposes. And again, you know, for over the top, this is just kind of a different way of looking at it. You've got your live and your video on demand in the Zixi ecosphere, and then we push it out to all of your devices. So uh, in this application, you know, we, we, we did uh, uh, 500,000 end users, 400 channels. So, so uh, video on demand and IPTV in the cloud is, is a reality. And uh, Zixi can be a big part of that, helping uh, smooth out some of the bumps, some of the dissatisfaction of dropouts or latency that uh, customers are, are experiencing. So you have video on the enterprise. So, you know, CEO is giving a speech. Uh, put the video into the Zixi ecosphere, uh, give uh, internal users access to, to this corporate video. Uh, we can control that content. Uh, we can transmit to, to the uh, desktop, to employees inside the enterprise on the desktop. 
we can push over over uh, to over the WAN to uh, smart devices, tablets, set top boxes, or people that are remote, people that are anywhere, remote workers, uh, people that are out and about, salespeople out in the field can then watch this video on their smart device, or we can push to set top boxes or internet browsers. So you can see here how this can be a critical component in uh, uh, video networking or IPTV system. We're working with film studios that are moving video, uh, live video between studios, uh, uh, producers, executives back at corporate want to see what's happening at remote uh, productions anywhere around the world. You know, they could be uh, filming a production in Scotland and the execs back in Hollywood want to see what's going on live and it's, you know, happening at odd times, you know, different time zones, but so they can dial it up on their iPad securely, all protected through Active Directory. And, and watch what's going on throughout the uh, uh, film or television studio. They can see what's happening on all of their productions, keep an eye on things. So who is Vidovation? You know, I, I assume since you guys registered for this, you kind of know who we are, but in case you don't, uh, Vidovation is a video and audio and data communications manufacturer and provider. Uh, we serve as broadcast, TV networks, sports leagues, enterprises uh, and IT departments. Uh, we help those who are, who are frustrated with dropouts or latency or irritated with high budgets when it comes to wireless uh, fiber optics or video networking. Uh, we help clients that are confused with which technology to, to use. A lot of times a client will come to us and say, I'm afraid I'm going to lose my job if I don't pick the right technology. If I pick the wrong technology and I waste my company's money, I may lose my job. So we find the right technology for the given application, for the given budget. Uh, when you engage with Vidovation, we're going to ask you a lot of questions. And uh, we, we, we hope you're OK with that. Most times the clients are. Uh, the, the more questions we ask and the more we learn about your business, the better we can help you with your business the less likely there'll be surprises that come up. Say, well, we didn't know you did X, Y, and Z in your workflow. So the more discovery we do, and, and we welcome your questions in return. Uh, and then, you know, we'll help. If you don't have a budget, we'll help you derive a budget. You know, we have some very basic solutions, and we have some very advanced solutions. So we, we, can, we can find a solution that meets your needs and fits within your budget. So we encourage you to invite us in. Uh, or give us a call, and uh, we'd love to help you with any of your uh, video transmission needs. Uh, if this is not a fit for you, we're always welcome uh, referrals or recommendations. That's a big part of our business, so we, we, we welcome that. So uh, if any of you guys have any questions, uh, here's a long list of our the clients I've worked with. Our te my team and I, we've worked with these clients over the years. I'm not going to read that all to you. Um, I'm going to do one thing. Let me see if I can bring it up. I wanted to bring up um, a link to um, our product page. Just bear with me a second. I'll send this to you. There's a great video on the Zixi product page that really summarizes. Uh, it's like a minute or two, two or three minutes, something like that. Um, it won't. I, I could play it through through the uh, through the system, but it won't play very well. Uh, the video will be choppy. But you can see here, if you go to our, our our website and you just type in Zixi in the little search box, it'll be the first item that comes up here. Or you can go to the URL I just put into the into the chat. Um, let me see. Do any of you guys have any questions? Um, let me see here. Oh, there's quite a few. Let me see. Can I pop this out so I can read it? There we go. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, a buddy of mine was asking, you know, how, how does Zixi handle the, the QoS issues and, and priority issues in an unmanaged network? Well, that, that, is, that is a very good question, Kevin. You know, it's a loaded question. Um, 
we don't have control over the internet. That that's the unfortunate aspect of it. If if the if the connection were to drop out completely and for long enough, or if you know uh, thousands of packets were sequentially lost, uh, what we can do in that situation is through the management tools, we can change the buffering uh, anywhere from zero to up to six seconds. So if something were to go horribly wrong with our connection or there was an un, unanticipated demand in the, in the circuit that we were using, we could on the fly up the buffering. And of course, it's going to add latency. You know, if we add six seconds of, late, of buffering, you have six seconds of latency. Um, but the, the, uh, 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 you can also have Zixi set in kind of an automatic or dynamic mode. Um, usually what users do is, is we recommend two to three times the circuit latency as the uh, optimum sweet spot setting for Zixi. Um, uh, another question is how do we measure the latency? You can always do a ping test uh, uh, from device to device or, or uh, Zixi has some of these statist statistics in the, uh, in the interface. Um, uh, Kevin also ans asked uh, you know, how is Zixi different than a CDN? Uh, CDN doesn't take care of the first mile and the last mile. So your camera, your computer, your device uh, will connect to the nearest CDN pop. Uh, it's that connection to the CDN that is going to be the weakest link. Uh, as you can see from the slides, we do often work with CDNs. A lot of our clients still do. We haven't eliminated that. But in a lot of the cases, a CDN may not be necessary, uh, where we can take the video all the way back to the, to the control room. But you know, if you're going to do one to many, uh, not everyone's device, not everyone's desktop player, everyone's mobile device, everyone's website will be Zixi enabled. So we would need a CDN to distribute to consumers for, for distribution as opposed to contribution. So for contribution needs, some broadcasters will go through a CDN uh, to contribute back to master control. In those situations, we may not need the CDN. Zixi would then act as the CDN through an unmanaged connection. Uh, I'm just reading some more questions. Yeah, th this is uh, uh, another question. You know, what is uh, uh, um, the the required bandwidth? Um, um, I believe we can. I, I will. Ch I'll double check with engineering. You know, you can see some of, in some of the examples we were doing an HD feed at 10 megs. Uh, one example had it down to 5 megs. Uh, when it comes to high def, it's usually the the uh, capability of the codec. Uh, you know, H.264 kind of falls apart if you try to push HD below two megs. So it's not so much Zixi. Zixi would just add overhead to a two meg HD stream. Uh, do you want to stream an HD video below two megs? There are codecs or an H.265, uh, 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 or if you are using H.265, we'll address some of those lower lower bit rates. So, so yes, it, it's it's kind of a loaded question. You know, what's the minimum bandwidth? It's more like uh, how poor or, or what what quality do you need at, at the end? Um, uh, oh, then somebody asked, is Zixi being used in this webcast? Unfortunately, no. This is a go-to webinar. Uh, but but uh, keep keep. That's a very good question. And remind me to tell you guys something very important. Uh, we plan on uh, implementing between now and NAB, uh, demonstrating some of our encoding technology, the Zixi technology, streaming it from our office to our website, doing it through a, an average quality internet connection, nothing fancy. So we're going to show you uh, real world streams that you can log into and, and, and it is our plan to have a player on our website where we can turn on a Zixi stream and do real demos that you can see. And then here uh, at the office, we can change bandwidths on bit rates on the encoder. We can set up a high def camera. We can put a video loop online, or we can show you live video. And then 
you can hear me through the phone line and hear for yourself what the latency is through the phone versus the Zixi connection. So uh, we can, um, uh, we can uh, 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 demo all that. Uh, yeah, there, there's a couple more questions here. I'll, I'll take note of them. And uh, uh, what we'll do is, uh, maybe since there's so many questions, what I'll do is we'll, we'll post uh, maybe frequently asked questions with the video and the PowerPoint. And then we'll answer some of these these questions either on the product page or on the uh, uh, the uh, webinar notes. All right, guys. So, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you today for uh, spending close to an hour, well, well, 59 minutes, almost an hour with Vidovation. We know you guys have a busy schedule. Uh, call myself or or my my colleague. My colleagues, anytime, if you have uh, applications for Zixi or any other uh, video transmission, video, audio, and data transmission application, whether it's wireless, fiber optic, or IP networking, uh, give us a call. We'd love to see you. Um, we will be at NAB. We uh, we have a great booth location. We're going to be in that upper central hall area. You know, you come in the the, the Las Vegas Convention Center. You come into the lobby. There's that first door on the right. We'll be right in there. GoPro will be right in the middle. We'll be off to the right against the wall, so we'll be like 20, 30 feet from the front door. We'll have a great location. We'd love to see you guys. Uh, we'll have some demos running. I'm not really sure uh, what Zixi demos we'll have running live at the show. Uh, I think uh, Zixi demos are most impactful running on your network through your systems but you know we'll we, we can set up demos uh, 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 for you anytime and help you with any of your communications needs so thanks again and uh, have a great day we'd love to hear from you